At this meeting we presented uh, the final results from a study looking at ruxolitinib versus best available therapy for PV patients who are resistant or intolerant to hydroxycarbamide. So, as we know, ruxolitinib is already approved in that space for precisely those patients, but because the original studies involved crossover, we have got no data on longer term benefits for patients. So in the UK, we did an academic study where we've uh, randomised 180 patients and followed them up for five years. And the study had some really um, important um, data. So just to highlight, just to kind of summarise, in line with the um, registration studies, we got better complete response rates and better durable complete response. But we also showed for the first time that ruxolitinib improved event-free survival for patients, where events were thrombosis, hemorrhage, transformation or death. So that's a really important clinical endpoint. And if you looked at those individually, we saw a correlation specifically with thrombosis reduction, but all of the events were actually in favour of ruxolitinib. We then went on and um, showed that something that has been controversial in the field for a long time is, is it really important to control the white cell count and the platelets? Is it just about the hematocrit? So in our study, if you attained a complete response, so control of the white count, platelet count and the hematocrit, regardless of what treatment you were on, you also had an improved event-free survival. So that validates that as a clinical target for patients. And finally, we did some molecular work which was pre-planned. So unlike colleagues in other myeloid malignancies, we know nothing about the clinical significance of attaining a molecular response. And in our study, we found that a 50% reduction in the JAK2 V617F FAF was more likely to occur with ruxolitinib over time and was more durable. But um, regardless of how it was attained, with which ever treatment, that those patients who had a 50% reduction at one year had improved event-free survival. And those for whom the molecular response was durable actually had progression-free and overall survival benefit as well. So that's a really significant finding in the field and may change the way we think about treating patients. Not only should we control the white count and the platelet count, but we maybe should be looking at the allele burden as well. And when it comes to um, additional mutations, we have some uh, findings which are of less interest, but that if you have an additional mutation, you're less likely to get a response. And if you particularly have an ASXL1 mutation, you don't do so well from an event-free survival perspective. But those are more minor points and no new findings in terms of safety, which is also important.